As happens to every sensible person sometime in their lives, I became obsessed with Christopher Nolan's Interstellar from 2014, and I was dead set on the idea of recreating a number of scenes from the movie. And while scenes plural didn't pan out, I managed to create what I believe is the star of the film, The Endurance. So today I'm gonna to show you a little bit behind the scenes how I brought this model to life, and if you're interested, how to construct the two microscale spaceships that you see right here. Let's take a closer look. So if you're here for the build tutorials, skip ahead here for the Ranger, or here for the Lander. Or you can sit and watch me ramble for the next few minutes about my love of Interstellar. No, seriously, if you've not seen Interstellar, I don't know what you're doing. It's well worth a watch. It's a beautifully crafted film. And it got me obsessed with just space in general. This is quite the departure from what I usually do, architectural castle-like things, but it was a very unique and fun challenge and definitely got me interested in doing more spaceship-like things in the future. The Endurance is perhaps one of the most recognizable non-Star Wars spacecraft in media, and it was just dying to be recreated as faithfully as possible in LEGO. It's a massive ship, and doing it at minifigure scale would have certainly been ridiculous. So I settled on this scale instead, which I think I can figure out if I can do math. According to a over-the-top, nerdy, in-depth Wikipedia article, the actual spacecraft is supposed to be 64 meters in diameter, or 210 feet, and this is just over 18 inches. And I'm not gonna do that math here and now, but I'm sure it's somewhere. And making a ship like this that's designed to only inhabit space is very difficult to bring into reality, where gravity plays a much larger role. So you'll notice here that this thing is suspended, something I never dabbled with before, but it's on my fishing line. And the thing is heavy, so I did go through a few gauges of fishing line before I settled on something strong enough and still thin enough to look decent. Uh, but you'll notice there's line here, line here, and also line here holding the middle section together because it is pretty flimsy, and then an additional one to make sure the whole circle doesn't capsize. Now, of course, if you are familiar with Interstellar, you'll know that time plays a huge role in the film. And so the design of the ship itself is based on a clock. There are 12 different modules. There are very few, if any more than one, LEGO element that breaks perfectly into this 12 section. And that was the biggest struggle. I wanted to find something that could lock into place because I knew this thing was going to be heavy. I couldn't just do regular hinges. So I ended up settling on this piece, which I think BrickLink lovingly refers to as Technic Rotation Joint Disc with Pinhole and 3L Lift Arm Thick. So obviously there's the middle bit and we'll get to that in a second, but for the design of the ship it uses three different base modules. So these white ones here are the thrusters, the engines. There are four modules that are designed to be transportable cargo pods. And then there's four remaining modules that serve various purposes. Uh, so this one here is the command module for the craft. These two are both habitation modules, which have your regular sleeping quarters, kitchen, things like that. And this here is the hibernation module, which have had the sleep tanks for the journey to the wormhole. For the redundancy of it all, there are two landers, which are the gray spacecraft, and two rangers, which are the smaller white craft, which all dock neatly into place right here. This build all started with the construction of the ranger and the lander, because I wanted to make sure there was enough recognizable details in these, and that would dictate the scale for the rest of the model. For their size, I'm pretty happy with them. Uh, the most fun parts usage taking place here are these ninja swords on the side to capture some of the very unique angling of these ships. Uh, there's some pretty impressive larger scale models of these uh, done primarily in studio that I've seen before. They're very modern looking ships. Uh, they're, they're, they're quite cool and it was an interesting challenge to create these as faithfully as possible at this scale. Like I mentioned earlier, displaying this thing is by far the biggest challenge. If I were to pick this thing up, say by any point. It, it, it would not hold itself together just because of the weight of this thing. I wanted it to look nice on all sides. There's a lot of bricks that go into making these 
very smooth tiled off sections. So instead, of course, I opted for the fishing line, something I usually uh, don't do. I try not to incorporate non-Lego stuff into my models. And so it became essential to make up for that sin, to make the frame at least out of Lego. So this is just every single black Technic lift arm that I have combined together to make a pretty strong frame. Thankfully the frame can actually be lifted up uh, and transported it around relatively easily. But I mean, look at that thing shake. That's, that's terrifying stuff right there. This is a model I've wanted to showcase for quite some time because I know there is a cult following for Interstellar. I like to think of myself as being part of that cult. It's a beautiful thing. Why do you want to be in a cult? I'm in the Lego cult already. That's true. I'm in a lot of cults. It's important, <laughs> that feeling of belonging. To be totally honest, because this thing isn't made out of dark orange or tan or brown or dark bluish gray, there's really no reason for me to take it apart either. So this one is something I'll happily display for some time. I know a lot of people have asked for tutorials on how these were made, so I think we'll spend the last part of this video going over these. Unlike a lot of the other things I make, these actually use no rare pieces. Uh, the rarest thing is probably going to be the ninja sword, but I mean, because of Ninjago, I have to believe that there are hundreds of those on the market, if not thousands. As for the rest of the model itself, even though the sections are very repetitive, I mean, it's three different modules, each repeated four times. I cannot ever recommend making something like this because it was such, such a nightmare to get into this configuration in a displayable form. It is very fragile. It is by far one of the most fragile things I've ever made. What I really want to see someone build from Interstellar is the Tesseract. Uh, I would be pretty impressed if somebody pulled that off convincingly. <laughs> if you know, you know. But yeah, let's go ahead and break down these ships. And when I say break down, I mean break down quite literally. I don't know how to make these anymore. I have to rip this one apart. Thankfully, there's two of them, so I can always reference the other one. So these are all the pieces you're going to need for the Microscale Ranger. There's really nothing too out of the ordinary here. The only one I want to point out is that this is a 2x2 two two brick in black. I know it might look like a 1x2 from this angle. Uh, otherwise, everything here, as far as I'm aware, is very much currently still in production and relatively easy to obtain. So, let's build this. Alright, so we'll start out with the 2x6 plate here. On top of that, we're going to place the 2x4 white slope and then grab the lamp holder clip. It's got basically two studs on each side. Put these on either side of that. And then on those, you're going to attach the upright one by one clips in black. We'll eventually attach our ninja sword to those. Next up, grab that two by four wedge plate. Two by two brick is going to go on top of that. That's gonna go right behind. Take those small brackets, put them on top there and then we're going to start making the windscreen so you'll take the hinge piece go ahead and attach one of the one by six tiles to that and then we're going to mirror this whole thing right so we have one for each side so you should have two like this they're eventually going to go right there take four of the one by ones in black you're just going to stack them on top of each other that's going to go right under the hinge on both sides Next up, you're gonna to wanna to take those headlight bricks and they're gonna be facing away from that hinge joint there, just like that. And on the very bottom of both, you're just gonna want the one by two bricks. On top of the one by two bricks on both, put the white clip piece and behind that, the one by two plate in white. Then take the pips in black and two one by one plates in white. The pip's gonna go on the bottom, and those will go on top of the one by one. Next, two more headlight bricks, and then grab four one by one black plates and two white ones, and you'll make a stack of those with the white on the very bottom, and then you'll flip it upside down and attach it into place there. And these will go right here and they'll rest perfectly on that slope piece we attached earlier. Then you'll take those corner tiles and orient them like this. This is 
as close as I thought I could get at least to the source material. Uh, the windscreens are very complex, a lot of different shapes, they're very, very interesting. And to keep things together at the end, you'll take that four long bar, attach it there, then grab your remaining two black clips, a one by two black plate, and then whatever the heck these are. You want this to be overlapping the clip to kind of cover up that connection. One by two plate there, and of course mirror that, and that's gonna clip right into place on the end, and you can angle it just a little bit back. Two by two white tiles here to clean off those sides really nicely, and then you'll take those one by four black slopes, put them on either side. On top of that, you'll take the remaining two by six plate in black, make sure that's all connected, two by three plate in white, one by two plate in black to maintain the color consistency there. And then you'll add these exhaust detailings here, which are those grill one by two sloped pieces. And then we'll add a, some additional windscreen detailing up here with a one by two tile in white and two corner tiles in black. And then we can use the black tile to finish that off. All right, we'll go ahead and flip this upside down. And then on the back, You'll place that one by six plate, the two remaining one by one black plates there, and then this snot brick's going to go there. Flip it back over, and then we'll make the back side, which is two two by four plates in white, two by two plate in white. Should have four quarter tiles left over in black. Those will just round out the sides there, and then this two by two tile. Now clip on there. The only thing that you should have remaining at this point are those ninja swords, which will take a little finagling to get just right, but we ultimately want to make it connect up the side and kind of angle up front. Something to that effect is what we're going for. And that's it. That is the, the micro scale ranger. And there's plenty of anti studs here to connect it to whatever you might connect it to. I think I did it right. This is great. All right, these are the pieces you'll need for the lander then. Again, mostly common, easy to find stuff here. Things that might be a little hard to recognize. Uh, these are just Technic pins with the stud. Yeah, nothing else of note here. Let's build the lander. Let's grab these hinge plates right away. We're gonna attach them right there in the middle. You'll take two of the one by one plates and to clean everything off, grab the one by two plates in black on the side. This, the underside, is actually going to be the front of our vehicle. Take the larger and then decide it. This, that's where we'll put the smaller bracket. This will be um, not only a place to attach the lander to other things, uh, but it's a nice place for the windshield to rest because it's connection. It's going to be kind of sketchy. We'll take our one by one cheater bricks, as I like to call them, and those are going to go right here. And then to widen out the vehicle, we'll take these inverted one by two by three slopes like that. Again, much like the other, we'll be mirroring sides as we go. So pretty much you can double up on everything. Two one by two snot bricks and two one by one snot bricks, all going to be facing upward. On top of those, two one by three bricks. And then here, kind of at the midpoint, we're going to try to connect everything together again. So much like in the front, we do have to offset this. So on only one side, we'll put the one by three. Place one hinge there. And then the other, again, is going to connect awkwardly in the middle there. We'll fill in the outsides with one by twos. We're going to do something kind of different here in the middle. We're going to use a bunch of one by twos. So this is actually going to stick up a bit. So we're going to put a one by two there, a one by two there, another one by two, yet another one by two, another one by two, and then another one by two. And so we've left a one by two gap there. And that's where the gray bracket is going to go. Uh, th and this is, like I said, for extra support. So we'll have the 2x6 black plate 
go across here and then the one by six across there. And you can form any variety of connections to connect this to whatever you want. And while we're here, we might as well get that windscreen done. This is the most interesting part of this. Uh, my brother actually helped me make this. Grab a one by three tile, place two pips right there, one by one in the middle of those. Again, we're just trying to get the interesting glass shapes on there by using a variety of different pieces. One by three, one by ones in black. In the middle, you'll actually put two one by one white plates. On top of these, two more black pips. And then one by three in white, two one by threes in black. Then you'll want headlight bricks on the side facing up and then a regular snot brick facing down. Into that snot brick, you can place this Exoforce robot hand. Just like the Ranger, we'll put some of these corner tiles. And then on top of all these, I'm gonna do black one by ones on the outside and a white one by one in the middle. And for our connection point, this is where things get interesting. Take those two nozzle pieces in white. Black pips are gonna go on the top of those. Then you're gonna take this one by three plate. That's gonna go there. And on top of those, you'll put our, our nozzle pieces. And we're going to try to connect this where those nozzle pieces meet. It doesn't need to be a super strong connection. We just need to make sure that when I flip this thing upside down, it doesn't fall out. There you go. Again, we're still a plate higher on this side, so we gotta take that into account. So we'll do a one by three brick on this side, but then on the opposite, whichever one is higher, that just gets two one by three plates, and then we're all even out again. One by two snap bricks with one by ones. And then we'll take these, and basically you want the angle going up and out on both sides. Then take the two two by twos and the four grill plates like that. We'll attach them on the outside. I've got the grills facing that way, just for an extra bit of texture for the engines. And the one by one with the bar on the top will go there. And then to slope this vehicle it's back downwards, we'll use the one by two by three slopes here, tile that off with a one by three. Then go ahead and take all four of these, all four of these, and your eight one by two cheese slopes. Oh, and of course, you'll need these snot bricks too. So the snot bricks will go on the outside. The two by threes are kind of going to dictate the angle of the wings here, and those will just go in on the remaining available studs. And then on the sides for these snap bricks, you'll place these funky two by twos. And then we're gonna cheese slope this all off. And that just leaves the thrusters in the back. Super easy, two by four bricks a two by two tile and a two by two jumper. These are just gonna attach into those small bars. And then to get some detail on the underside, what I've done is take one of these one by one rounded tiles on top of the Technic pin, and those are just gonna go inside all of those. Now we wanna line these up as best we can, I believe. Are they angled something like that? I'd have to look up a picture from the movie again but something like that is what you're looking for and that is a lander well anyway that's all i got on this one thank you for taking the time to watch it i'd love to see more interstellar mocks out there so if anyone else has their own endurance whether it's larger smaller the same scale i'd love to see it have a great life i'll catch you next time